Hello and welcome. This is Vicky Parfano and I appreciate you stopping by. I hope this video has lots of tips that will help you with your art journaling. And I wanted to show you the kind of journal that I have been using. I love this style of journal, which helps you make nice flat pages and then insert them in your journal when you're finished. And this saves a lot of problems with inking running through. Now this is a handbook. I absolutely adore this journal. It is made of cold press 140 pound 300 GSM watercolor paper and the size of it is six by six inches. I've been working in here on these feathers and I painted these using watercolor inks. Now I use several different colored inks on these feathers and the re-inkers that I'm using are from Stampin' Up! but I made another watercolour page using a slightly different technique to create this butterfly, again using watercolour inks. Now I created the butterfly by embossing this image from the Beautiful Day stamp, which is by Stampin' Up! onto the watercolour paper in black embossing powder and that created little dams for me to contain each of the colours so they didn't run all over the place when I put them in the butterfly. I used a little bit of water to mix in with each colour. Some colours are more vibrant than others, they just have more water mixed with them. The colours I used were Melon Mambo, Crushed Curry and Emerald Envy. Now this is what I want to show you about this beautiful art journal and any art journal that you have which has a similar ring uh, sorry, not ring binding, spiral binding like this one, you can use this technique. Now all I'm doing is making a small slit with my scissors between each of the rings. And what this is going to allow me to do is to take the page out so that I can work on it. And this is really great for a lot of reasons. You can use it to spray or emboss or stamp on a flat surface and it's out of your album. See how I'm just pressing each of those together? I'm not tearing the page at all, it's just coming out perfectly and I'm going to be able to put it back into that album later, I'll show you right at the end. Now I have a black gelato here and I want to create a frame for this piece. So as it is, it looks quite unfinished. It looks like it was just a sketch that I did and didn't complete, which is in fact the case. So I always like to put a border or a frame around my art journal pages. To me, it helps to integrate what I have made on the page with the page itself. And rather than doing a double page spread, as I do in my dilutions journals, this is a standalone page. Now your best friend with gelatos is always going to be a baby wipe. You can wipe your fingers with them, you can wipe your work surface with them and keep everything neat and tidy. You can see it's kept the back of this really clean too so that I don't get any mess on the back of my page. Now I'm just going to draw a line with my gelatos. Just a fine line to start with. I think I'm probably going to come back and make this quite thick later on. It's just an idea of a border at the moment, but it will become quite a thick border as I finish this piece. Now I'm going to rub with my fingers and try and get a nice blend, which is pretty easy to do. Just use your fingers and blend away. Now I have this sticker book by a Amy Tangerine, and I love this because it has a lot of the same colours that I used in my butterfly. You can see all the pretty stickers in it and I quite like this page with the gold words on it and the words are quite kind of a matte gold they're not super shiny so I wanted to stay away from anything that had too much shine in it because that can be quite distracting and then these hearts are all in the same colors as the ink so there's a nice pink a nice yellow and a nice green in the hearts so I thought well that would make a perfect complement now I'm getting out my ruler just to measure the halfway point. So with a six by six inch album, this is three inches. So I'm going to start in the center or close to the center. I'm going to start with the Y from the words stay wild and put it just before the three inch mark. And I'm going to work backwards from there. 
I like to work from the centre point and move out. That way it's easier to align your letters. Now on this particular sticker sheet, you can see that the letters are bounced. So by that I mean one letter will be up, one will be down, one will be up, one will be down. And all I'm doing is following the way they are put on the sticker sheet. And this makes aligning them super easy because it gives you a lot of, well, it's very forgiving, put it that way. So if your words aren't or letters aren't extremely straight, it doesn't really matter. I'm using the ruler to give me an idea of where that straight baseline is, but I'm bouncing one up, one down, one up, one down, and I'm copying, and you'll see this as the letters come off the sheet, how they are laid out on the sheet. So this is a very forgiving set of stickers. So you don't need to stress about making a mistake or not getting them lined up. As long as you start at that center point and work backwards and then work from the center point and work forwards on the word wild, you'll have a nice gap in the middle. Now I love this arrow, so I'm going to use that at the top. And again, taking my ruler up just to give me a visual of where a straight line is. And I'm going to put it somewhere away from the border because I want to make the border a little bit thicker. So that's how they look now. And I'm going to take some of these colored hearts in the same colors as the inks that I have used and I'm going to place them on the page. Now I like triangles in art. I like to have a visual triangle going across my page somewhere. So I'm going to create a little triangle of hearts one on the lower left hand side and another triangle on the upper right hand side. Now I have two hearts in each of the colors, two yellow, two green, two pink. And that looks really nice. But the other thing I really like to do is to have odd numbers on my cards and in my art journals. I find odd numbers, fives, sevens or threes are really appealing to us. So I'm going to put a seventh little heart just down the bottom just so that I have an odd number there. So now it's time to start integrating all of the pieces into the background. You can see I've made that frame much wider and I'm using some water on a brush just to blend it even more. And I'm going to burnish those stickers with a bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, you could use the handle of some scissors here. Now I'm bringing in a thick marker. This is a super Sharpie, so it's quite big and thick. And the reason I want a thick marker again is so that the page will integrate nicely. We have a thick border, we have thick lines around the butterfly. I want to put some really bold lines around that gold lettering. And you can see how that is starting to integrate with the page rather than looking as though I've just stuck things on top of the page. It's helping those stickered letters become part of the background as well. So the background was a watercolour wash with mainly the mum, uh, melon mumbo ink and the crushed curry ink. I didn't use any green in the background. I saved that just for the butterfly. Now I'm putting some marks on here. I'm not doing lines that join up. I'm trying to make these lines very sketchy. I want them to look arty. I don't want them to look as though I've very carefully outlined everything. That would kind of be defeating the purpose. And I'm just putting some little dots. I think I'm going to turn it upside down and just put the bottom of that arrow in. And now add a few more little dots. And I'm bringing in a 0 0.3 fine tip marker now. And I'm filling in around the rest of the gold lettering. So don't stress if it's not perfect when you try these art journal pages. The idea is that they are going to look like art, they are going to look sketchy, and you don't want it to look like anything that's too perfect. Now here I'm just outlining the hearts again using very sketchy strokes with my pen. I'm not trying to outline them perfectly, I'm giving an impression that they were created quickly, and that's the look that I'm after.
and just a little bit more blending I want just a slightly thicker area around certain parts of the frame and I feel as though this is really integrated well with the background I think it's starting to really look as though it belongs here Now I'm just going to bring some dots in with that very heavy super sharpie which has quite a heavy point on it and just adding these dots was something that really brought the whole thing together and again gave it that artsy sketchy look. Now that's how it looks now that it's finished and I'm going to show you how it goes back into the art journal. So let me bring my art journal in and I'll show you how this works. It's just fantastic I'm so thrilled that I was able to figure this system out I'm sure other people know how to do this too but I was sitting with my spiral journal thinking oh how can I get this page out I might want to emboss it I might want to spray it I might want to do other things with it and then put it back in and it's this simple you just press it back in and it's perfectly back into the journal Look at that part of my art journal again. So I love this system. And I, I have quite a few of these albums. I have another couple that are in an eight by eight inch size as well. I like working with the square format. So that's the journal for today. Don't forget to leave me a comment and like this video. It really helps my channel. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time.